So if we consider a sheet of paper, right? So we can, you know, take a sheet of paper. Let's say we take this sheet of paper and we cut it in, you know, cut it in pieces and we cut it apart and then we have all these pieces. We take these pieces of paper and we drop those sheets of paper. Um, they fall to the ground, right? Um, you know, all of these different, you know, as these sheets fall, maybe, you know, one chance in a very, very high number, maybe they'll form like a, that original sheet of paper or like a puzzle. But you're never, ever going to see that fused sheet of, sheet of paper again like it was in the original, right? And so that's forever changed. Um, same thing with an egg, right? If you take an egg and you let it drop to, drop to the floor and it cracks on the floor, that egg's never going to be the same again. You could try to extract the yolk. You could try to, you know, glue the yolk back together, all that kind of stuff, but it's never going to be the same again. Likewise, if you, you know, let's say you have a, a, a glass like this, right? And you just throw it into the air. You give it some, you know, potential energy. It lands on the table and then it's the original cup again. We just don't see that, right? And so there are processes that, uh, you know, that we can imagine but that, that, con that can serve energy. There's nothing wrong with that, right? I could take this from the ground, right, and then throw it into the air, give it some kinetic energy that turns into potential, lands on top of the table. But we just never see that. And so this, this falls underneath the um, conservation of energy. And so um, the second law is, um, you know, describes a lot of processes that don't happen. Another one that never happens is that heat, um, you know, can flow uh, spontaneously from a hot object to a cold object. Um, it will not fall, flow, flow spontaneously from cold to hot. So in other words, if you have, you know, two objects, one that's colder, one that's hotter, let's say this is the hot object. Let's say this is the colder object. What's never going to happen is this this object get ho even hotter and then this get even colder, right? Because these molecules in here are bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around. It's going to smash into these, and then these are going to start to move faster, right? So you're never going to have the reverse. And so that's that's an important part of the second law as well. So this is the Kevin Planck statement. No process is possible whose sole result is the complete conversion of heat from a hot reservoir into mechanical work. So you're never going to ever have a 100% efficient engine, and we'll talk about why that is. And then no process is possible where the sole result is the transfer of heat from a cooler object to a hotter object. That's the Clausius statement. So both of these fall under the second law. If we look at that, uh, that piston from the original picture that we had, and we consider that, right? We have that hot gas inside here that's expanding and pushing that piston over, right? And as it pushes that piston over, that gas is going to naturally cool down. And so, you know, as that happens, the, you know, the gas is expanding. Um, and this, these molecules are going all over the place. They're not necessarily all lined up, right? So they're all going all over the place. And uh, therefore, you know, there's some, some kind of chaos in there, but, you know, we're harnessing some of that, right? Now, if we were able to get all those molecules to line up, let's say we got all those molecules to line up and we're pushing this piston over perfectly, right? And those molecules are perfectly pushing the piston over. And as they do that, you know, they're exerting all their energy and all those molecules you exert all their energy. If they do that, then what would actually happen is, you know, if it could do that, the final temperature would be zero Kelvin because it exerted all of their energy, right? And we know that's impossible. Really what's happening is it's pretty disordered. All these molecules are going all over the place. Some of them are pushing that piston over, but some are smashing into the wall here, to the wall here, the wall here, into each other. So it's more chaotic. And so that's where you're never going to have a 100% efficient engine where all those molecules are lining up. So a good example of an engine where we can evaluate this is where we have water, we have a boiler, and we're heating this water up, turning into steam. That steam comes through, through here. It's pushing a piston over. It's like that made of lock, you know, simulation I showed you guys on that first day. Pushing the piston back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, or it could be like a pinwheel here. The, the hot steam comes in, pushes this around, cools down, and then goes to the condenser. 
turns back into water, then we can take that back up and that boiler can heat it up again. And we have that process continuing. And so, yeah, and so, you know, we're never going to have a 100% uh, efficiency with that. You know, you wouldn't want to put your hand here right after that, that you know, um, piston's pushed over. It's still going to be pretty warm because and it didn't exert all of its energy. It didn't use it all to do practical work.